Okay, so this afternoon's talk is, sorry for the lame <clears throat> title, and it's Toma. Let's give him a big DEF CON welcome. Come on. <laughs> Louder. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, wow, it's an honor to be uh, here at DEF CON again. Uh, I hope you do enjoy yourselves as well. Uh, I'm uh, Toma. Uh, I've been calling myself a hacker for uh, almost 10 years. I'm from Hungary and I work for a, uh, an IT security company uh, in Hungary uh, as a pen tester and a developer. Uh, this is my third time uh, at DEF CON and I'm also a regular speaker at uh, Central Europe's uh, Hacker Conference activity. Uh, that's enough about me. Uh, how do I choose this uh, topic? It, uh, it was not the usual way, so I, I didn't have uh, any interest in, in uh, MATLAB and uh, this software, but I was at a friend's uh, birthday party, and uh, at two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, her sister asked me if I could help her in uh, MATLAB. And I had some uh, vague memories uh, about MATLAB uh, back from university, uh, but <clears throat> Of course, they said yes, so the next day there was I sitting in my room uh, installing MATLAB, and uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, what I install on my machine, I, I try to hack. Uh, and there was a, a lot of stuff to hack. This software is uh, huge. There are several web servers, it's cloud integration, lots of functionalities, lots of attack surfaces. Uh, so, and hacking is fun, so I, I dived in, but I didn't want to uh, discriminate MATLAB, uh, so I also downloaded a trial of uh, Mathematica and Maple, and uh, together they gave a pretty mm, nice uh, topic to talk about. Uh, in this, uh, this talk, uh, probably won't be the most technical talk you, you will hear at DEF CON. I won't show you any groundbreaking techniques or methodologies, uh, but I will show you a bunch of zero days in this free software. Let's uh, start with uh, MATLAB, uh, some simple stuff. Uh, like every, like, mm, every scripting language, uh, MATLAB has also uh, facilities to run native codes, native commands. Uh, it has a system command which uh, you can use to uh, execute um, OS commands. You can also use the bank symbol. And uh, there are facilities to load native libraries, Java or .NET libraries, and uh, come objects too. Uh, this is, of course, not a vulnerability in itself, but can be used for uh, malicious purposes. Um, for example, a spear phishing attack uh, can be uh, can be created uh, with a malicious uh, MATLAB script. Mm, one other interesting uh, aspect of this uh, native command execution is that uh, you can download uh, MATLAB Mobile, and uh, you can create a free registration. Uh, at uh, MATWORKS servers, and uh, you can actually run uh, MATLAB functions on MATWORKS servers, and uh, this is not whitelisted or blacklisted, so you can also uh, run these system commands on their servers. Uh, granted, it's in a Docker environment. I did not try to escape it, but we all know that uh, it's just a, a privilege escalation bug away. Okay, so I mentioned using uh, malicious MATLAB uh, scripts in, in a phishing attack or something like that, mm, but it should be fairly easy uh, to protect against these attacks uh, because you just have to scan your uh, scripts for these dangerous functions. But uh, MATWORKS uh, have a solution against uh, IP theft, uh, which is the function P code. Uh, with P code, you can uh, obfuscate your uh, MATLAB scripts, so it won't be uh, that obvious uh, what they do. Uh, 
MATLAB itself uh, uses it, uh, lots and lots of uh, functionalities in uh, MATLAB are implemented as uh, P files, P coded uh, MATLAB scripts. Uh, even though uh, MATWORKS has a warning that this is merely an uh, obfuscation, it's not, uh, uh, not secure enough to trust your sensitive data to it. Uh, but because uh, lots of MATLAB's functionality is implemented as uh, P files, I needed to reverse engineer this algorithm. Uh, and uh, this was kind of painful because uh, there are a huge number of uh, native libraries that call uh, Java jars uh, that in turn uh, execute uh, MATLAB P files that sometimes go back to uh, Java libraries. So from an ex external viewpoint, it's, uh, it's quite a mess. Uh, and it got me confused a few times. Um, one of these uh, even uh, created a, f uh, a nice fair night uh, topic. Uh, I have found a, uh, an RCE bug via static code analysis, mm, but it turned out that uh, that code was uh, some leftover that code that is not uh, used anyway. Uh, so uh, eventually I have found the P code uh, implementation and I was able to uh, create a Python script that uh, decodes P files uh, back to uh, MATLAB scripts. Uh, it was a, a huge uh, internal debate with myself if I should release uh, this Python script, but I have uh, decided against it uh, because even uh, though MATLAB Mm, has that warning. Uh, lots of people use uh, P code to uh, protect their uh, research and they didn't want to uh, expose it. But uh, I will uh, show you the uh, most interesting uh, step of the P code algorithm. P code is uh, Picot consists of uh, three steps. Uh, there's a serialization step, a compression, and, in, uh, and an encryption uh, step. The latter two are implemented in M uh, underscore parser library, and they are pretty straightforward. They are uh, really easy to uh, reverse engineer, so if you are interested in it, you should uh, do it, uh, you could do it without problems. Uh, the serialization was uh, more interesting because it's uh, it, uh, it's a lot of uh, probably C++ code and it would have been uh, really painful to reverse engineer even with uh, some uh, decompiler. But what was interesting is that almost the whole algorithm could be understood by just uh, looking at the P files, just looking at the data. So here is a, a P file. Uh, it's already color coded, but even without the colors, uh, it should stick out that uh, there are separate blocks that contain uh, function names uh, and numbers used in the scripts and uh, string literals. So. Uh, what remains uh, to understood is this first block and, uh, and this last. If you look at the first block, it uh, really seems to be uh, seven D words that have uh, very small values. And if you look at these values, the first is uh, 0xoc, which is 12. Uh, and if you count the function names, uh, it's 12. Uh, the second number is 2, and uh, there are two numbers. Uh, so these uh, seven uh, D words, uh, it seems these are the uh, numbers of symbols in the uh, P file. There are seven of them. Uh, I, ha I, I was able to identify uh, three of them, but it turned out that it's uh, not really important. Uh, 
so you, this was enough to uh, reverse the algorithm. What remains is this last block, uh, which seems to be uh, a combination of uh, some random numbers that are in white and some 0x8080 uh, uh, pairs, 8080 uh, something uh, pairs. Mm. After a while, it, uh, it turned out that uh, if you subtract uh, 0x8080 from these pairs, then the result is, uh, is an index uh, into this array. So the first one is 0x8080, you subtract 0x8080, you get zero, and the zeroth uh, element of the array is x, and uh, if we go back to the original script, you can see that it is indeed starts with the x. Uh, and the next symbol is, is an equal sign. So maybe uh, 0x5f uh, represents the equal sign, and, uh, and maybe uh, all these numbers uh, represent some uh, symbols or uh, reserved words in um, MATLAB language. So this was the part when I, I asked for the help of a disassembler. I, I looked for uh, these uh, these numbers in the disassembly of the library, and I found uh, an array of uh, of the reserved words and uh, symbols, which could be easily extracted from the binary. So uh, it only needed to uh, substitute those numbers with the uh, symbols and reserved words. Uh, to get the original uh, MATLAB script. So um, it took a few days, but it was uh, easy enough to, uh, to, to reverse engineer the whole algorithm only just by looking at the data. Um, okay, so I've already uh, told you about uh, MATLAB Mobile, uh, and I've told uh, that you can connect to MATWORKS servers with it. Um, but uh, it, it's not only MATWORKS servers you can connect to, but uh, you can create your own, and you can connect to it too. Uh, the communication between the mobile application and the uh, server is an HTTP communication. Uh, it's plain HTTP. There is no possibility to uh, set up HTTPS, but the bodies uh, seem to be Base64 encoded binary blobs, so they are maybe encrypted. Mm. These are the uh, request and uh, response bodies. I have uh, reverse engineered the uh, server code, and uh, it turned out that it is indeed encrypted, but it is encrypted uh, by uh, accelerating the plain text message with the uh, MATLAB server's password. So it's really strong encryption. But it gets better because every single plain text message is uh, prefixed with a string MATLAB connector uh, dash v1. This means that uh, if you have one single message, you can XOR the first uh, 18 bytes of it uh, with a MATLAB connector underscore v1, and you get the password. So uh, this is, is pretty nice, but uh, the maximum password length is 32 bytes. So what if somebody uh, sets 32 bytes password? No worries, because, uh, because of the uh, structure of the plain text messages, uh, these are JSON messages, uh, there are always uh, 32 static bytes at the beginning of, of a message. So this is how uh, request starts, and uh, this is how uh, response starts. So if you got one 
uh, message from uh, the mobile MATLAB mobile application to the server, you can uh, deduce the password. I have created a Burp Suite Pro uh, extension that uh, does exactly this. Uh, it retrieves the password and creates a uh, MATLAB connector tab that shows you the uh, plain text message and uh, lets you edit it. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't uh, try to uh, test further the MATLAB, uh, MATLAB mobile server, but uh, this could be a, a big help for that, for e.g. fuzzing the server or something like that. Uh, this uh, extension and uh, all of my uh, demos, all of my exploits uh, will be available on my GitHub shortly after my talks. You can download and play with it. Okay, while I was looking for the uh, implementation of MATLAB Mobile, uh, I have found an interesting web.xml uh, in the MATLAB uh, server. It described uh, some servlets of which two seemed very interesting, the engine servlet and the MATLAB servlet. The MATLAB servlet evaluates functions via a GET request. Uh, it is whitelisted, there are only a handful of functions that can be called, uh, and it is uh, localhost only. But uh, I was looking at uh, all these functions that can be called, and it turned out that the PS link private uh, function is basically just a wrapper around uh, fevil. Uh, fevil is the MATLAB function used to evaluate arbitrary MATLAB functions. What this means is uh, you can call arbitrary MATLAB functions, uh, the system function included, uh, by just one GET request to localhost, to the MATLAB server. So you can you can have a website uh, that embeds uh, an image with uh, such an URL, and if somebody with an open MATLAB uh, opens your website, it will uh, execute whatever uh, MATLAB command you want. So this means basically remote code execution on victim's machine, as we will shortly see. So yeah, you can see the calculator opened. Thanks. Okay, so the other servlet uh, is, it also evaluates MATLAB functions, uh, but it, this does not work uh, on a default configuration, so you, you, you have to uh, turn on engine servlet. But it still can be used to, I don't know, backdoor uh, somebody's machine. Uh, with engine servlet, there is no white or a blacklist. You can call any uh, MATLAB functions. It requires an API key, but uh, this is uh, burnt into MATLAB. It's MATLAB. Uh, and it's also localhost only, uh, at least in theory, because they used uh, the get request URL uh, Java function to get the uh, originating URL, which uses the host header, so it can be very easily faked. Uh, there's the uh, key, and I also have a demo for this. Mm. So I'm starting uh, MATLAB and I'm going to show you the uh, simple curl command that can be used to start calculator on victim's machine via MATLAB. I'm just going to fast forward a bit. So we can see that uh, uh, it's forbidden because uh, ng server is not running right now, but this is the code that can be used to turn it on. 
Uh, fast forwarding. Okay, it's on now. And we try again, we get the calculator. So it's, it's again uh, remote code execution, but it uh, needs um, ng server to be turned on. Okay, uh, moving on to another uh, Matverse product. Uh, it's called uh, MATLAB Production Server. Uh, it can be used to deploy MATLAB functions on the web. It has an express-based management dashboard which uses uh, signed cookies to store the session. Uh, it uses the cookie session and the key grip uh, NPM packages uh, for this. But it has a huge implementation problem because they have an array of two keys. Uh, it contains MATLAB and Simulink, but in reality, only the first one is ever used. They never uh, rotate the keys. Uh, we can confirm this by uh, creating a signature from uh, for a cookie uh, using eg OpenSSL. So you can see here's the uh, password, and we get the same signature uh, that we got from the server. What this means for an attacker is that we can create a super cookie that grants uh, administration rights to any MATLAB production servers, always. And this can, of course, be used to uh, run uh, code on the MATLAB production server because you can uh, upload a MATLAB function that uh, contains only the system function uh, and you can call it uh, remotely. So I have a Python script that uh, creates a new uh, MPS instance. It's cre it creates a new uh, application and uh, deploys and starts it. Uh, and the, this application uh, contains only uh, the function MATLAB call. So if we run this uh, Python script, you can see it's working. Uh, and we have a new MPS uh, application. It's running all right. So now we can use the uh, MPS shell.py script to run commands on the MPS server. Uh, so as you can see, it's a bit slow, but, but it eventually uh, answers uh, with the results. So this is uh, remote code execution without any authentication to the MPS server. Okay. So I did not do a thorough inspection of uh, MPS. I, I did not have <laughs> the time yet, but I have found some additional uh, flows. Um, it's just an example, it's a stored XSS. I'm sure there are uh, several others, so it's a nice target, I think. Okay, so moving on to uh, another uh, math product, uh, it's Mathematica, and it can also execute native commands, but uh, notebooks, Mathematica notebooks are not uh, scripts, so they won't uh, evaluate when you open them. Uh, but there are uh, expression co expressions called uh, dynamics that can be used to uh, evaluate expressions uh, automatically. But these uh, dynamic uh, expressions have some protections against uh, malicious notebooks. They want, there are some uh, Mathematica functions, um, expressions that are uh, dangerous and they won't uh, evaluate via a dynamic expression without user interaction. Uh, at least they shouldn't, but I have found a way 
uh, by trial and error to bypass this uh, product, uh, production. Yeah. I'm a bit lost. So, so I, I'm going to show the poll on trial and error process in this uh, demo. The first thing uh, I've tried was the was a simple run command, which can be used to uh, run commands, but it pops up the CMD uh, window, so I didn't like that. It turned out that run process uh, does not pop up the CMD window, so it looks better. Now I'm trying to wrap this into a dynamic, and it became quite a disaster because every time a dynamic is uh, displayed, uh, it evaluates the expression. So it was a, a, a loop and... Uh, <laughs> So eventually I, I managed to quit. <laughs> and I have also found a way to, uh, uh, to get around this uh, infinite loop. Uh, we can use the tracked symbols uh, dynamic parameter to uh, basically make a dynamic uh, update only once when it first displayed. So now if we try to save this uh, into a file. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I'm trying to open the file and uh, there's indeed a warning. So it won't execute pinball without uh, the, without user interaction. I was looking through the documentation and uh, I found another expression called, oh, sorry, <laughs> there's something uh, other in this video too. There are so-called uh, safe directories uh, and the documents inside safe directories are not checked for these uh, dangerous functions. So dynamics will always evaluate from them. So if you can get somebody to download your malicious uh, notebook to a safe location, then you are good to go. Uh, no tricks necessary. But if you don't have that uh, luxury, you can use the interpreter uh, expression, which is used to uh, run uh, expressions from a string, and it should be a, a dangerous function, but it turned out it's not. So this can be used to auto-execute commands uh, with a uh, Mathematica notebook. So this is how you can uh, bypass the dynamic protection. Okay. So, uh, really similar to, uh, to mathematical notebooks are computable document format documents. Uh, these are almost the same, uh, but they are run in a restricted environment. They are run in a, a sandbox, but you can also uh, run them from a browser. So it, somewhat widens the attack surface. The biggest restriction of, uh, uh, of the sandbox is that you have no file system access. You can't uh, download files, you can't even uh, execute commands, but there are uh, still some ways to, to abuse these CDFs. When I was looking through the documentation, I have found out that uh, you can do TCP IP from uh, CDFs. And my very first thought was uh, that I can create a SOX proxy with that. So if I can get someone to open my uh, CDF document, 
which implements a SOX proxy, then it will open a proxy into uh, the victim machine, into the victim uh, network. So I thought it would be pretty cool, so I did implement that proxy, and I'm gonna show you this with a Linux machine that runs uh, X server. Uh, this is the victim, and uh, it will open the CDF file that uh, implements the SOX proxy. And I'm gonna use it to create uh, a screenshot uh, of the X desktop remotely through the SOX server. So I'm using uh, SOCAT to uh, to redirect the SOX communication into a Unix socket. Okay, I started the CDF file, creating the uh, listening socket for the X11 server. I'm just gonna go and fast forward it a bit. Okay, so now it's uh, everything is uh, running. I can use uh, XWD uh, to download a screenshot from the X server. It runs quite a while, so I'm fast forwarding again. But when it's done, uh, I'm converting it to a PNG, and uh, you can see that creating the snap uh, screenshot was indeed successful. Thank you. Okay. So another uh, Wolfram uh, research product is a lightweight grid manager. Uh, it's a clustering solution for, from uh, uh, Wolfram research. It's uh, basically a Tomcat-based uh, web application to uh, manage mathematical kernels. Uh, it needs authentication to, to make changes, but you can start uh, kernels without authentication. It has some uh, protection, though, because you can set up an IP whitelist, but these protections uh, have some very serious implementation flaws. First for the authentication, uh, this is the uh, config file uh, snippet that implements the authentication. You can see that it's only uh, for GET and POST requests. This is the first flow, uh, you will see shortly why. And uh, they also have an AGP listener available. This is a second flow. So the first one is, is a problem because the application will accept uh, parameters uh, from the query string, and this means you can use a head uh, HTTP request, and it uh, does not require authentication. It does not. In, uh, it's not in the configuration file. So you can change. Uh, any configuration without authentication by just using a head request. But you have to uh, have to bypass the uh, IP filter first. Uh, you can use AGP for this because uh, via AGP uh, you can lie about the source address. You can say that you are coming from uh, local host. Uh, so the application will accept the uh, accept your request because the IP filter is implemented in in the application level and uh, not in the application server level. So this can be used to bypass the IP filter. There is one more uh, vulnerability uh, in this implementation that makes it really easy to uh, exploit this. Uh, it has the the, the, you can set the kernel's path, 
uh, we are uh, setting and that functionality contains uh, an OS command injection uh, vulnerability. So this means if you combine uh, these three vulnerabilities, you can have arbitrary uh, OS command injection uh, on any lightweight grid manager server without any authentication. I have uh, created a Python script that uh, does this. So you can see it's the AGM uh, application. I'm going to start a listener and I'm going to start a connect box shell uh, by exploiting these vulnerabilities. Fast forward again, you can see that I have a connection back and uh, I can uh, execute commands on the uh, AGM server. Okay, one other thing about AGM, it's uh, not uh, available, there, there is no uh, trial or evaluate license. But I really wanted to test it and I dig through the whole internet and uh, I have found a university website where, where there was a Mathematica license number available for public. So maybe, maybe you don't, don't do that. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Mathematica and uh, in general Wolfram products use the WSTP protocol to communicate uh, internally uh, between the kernel and the front end and externally in a clustering situation or, or with some third party native applications. Uh, this protocol uses plain text communication so uh, it's pretty easy to uh, launch a uh, man-in-the-middle attack against it. And in this case, uh, a man-in-the-middle attack means remote code execution because you can send a, a WSTP evaluate packet, which will be evaluated on the receiving side. I'm gonna show you this uh, by connecting Mathematica to a grid. And uh, I'm running a simple calculation on the grid. Uh, so I'm gonna calculate three times two using the grid. And it gives us the result. But when I uh, start my um, man in the middle attack script, which uh, uses uh, hex inject to uh, replace any packets with, uh, with one evaluate packet, I'm using uh, ARP spoof to ARP poison, launching a listener, and when I try to compute uh, three times two, I get a Connect back shell, so I can run OS commands on the server. So this shows that uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, this shows that uh, the meet attack uh, is really on remote code execution. Uh, okay, you can also. Uh, offload uh, some heavy works from uh, Mathematica to uh, external programs. Uh, so you can call functions uh, from Mathematica from uh, these external programs, but uh, there's dangerous functionality because uh, these external programs can also talk back to you and they can also uh, send evaluate packets. So such a, a, an external program can execute code on your Mathematica server. I'm gonna show you this by slightly modifying one of the WSTP uh, examples. I'm adding two 
evaluate lines. The first one just uh, prints some message. And the second one uses the run expression to uh, st the run process uh, expression to start the calculator. So I'm compiling it, starting the external program, and creating a link to this program in Mathematica. When I try to install this external program, you can see that calculator runs. So it's uh, not an exploit, not a vulnerability, but just some dangerous functionality in the program. Okay, my last target, uh, it's Maple. When I installed it and tried it, the first thing that uh, uh, stick out to me was that Maple documents are XML files. It was not, uh, not really a uh, surprise that the software was susceptible to uh, XXC attacks, but this of course requires that uh, the victim opens a malicious Maple document. But there are two ports uh, listening on uh, on, on every IP address on the default Maple install. The first one is not really interesting. It, it just uh, accepts a number and uh, shuts down the port. But the second one, TCP19991, uh, it's really interesting because it's a simple remote control server. Uh, here is the, the protocol. You send it a ping, it sends it back on ECK, and now you can send uh, send the server a, a command, which can be uh, starting a Maple application. Maple applications are defined as uh, Java uh, libraries, so they, they are burnt into the software. It's not, uh, not an obvious way to exploit uh, this uh, command, but you can also uh, uh, open uh, Maple documents with the open command. And if you have, uh, if you create a, uh, a file share and put your uh, malicious Maple document on that file share, uh, then you can use this uh, remote control server to open the malicious document from your file share on the victim's uh, Maple machine. Uh, there is an auto execute feature in Maple. Uh, which can be used to execute native comments uh, with this, but it uh, requires user interaction, so it's a bit hard to exploit, but you can combine this uh, remote control server with the fact that the application is susceptible to XXC, uh, does not need user interaction, but you can also do a SRF or uh, download files from victim's machine uh, using an out-of-band XXC attack, which I'm gonna show you. So uh, while Maple is starting, you can see that uh, this is just a simple uh, XXC payload. I'm starting an FTP server that uh, will receive the, uh, the file we are going to steal. I'm also starting a web server that uh, serves the, uh, XX, the second stage of the XXC uh, payload. Okay. Okay, fast forward. And I'm also starting an SMB server to uh, serve my malicious uh, Maple document. And now I can use the remote control server to open that document in the victim's uh, Maple. So there's ping ACK. And I'm opening that file from my server. And uh, this is where you will see the uh, result of the 
uh, XXC exploit, uh, you can see it's a directory listing because uh, Maple is in Java and you can do directory listing uh, in Java with uh, XXC. But I know you are, uh, you all want to see another calculator, so, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you that <laughs> shortly. So it's the same attack, I'm just, yeah, that's your calculator. <laughs> it, it's an ASCII calculator. <laughs> okay, uh, this was my uh, last uh, demo and uh, this is the uh, end of my talk. There are a uh, lot of stuff to look at uh, in this software uh, still, so these are just a few ideas, these are, the things I will probably look at in the future, uh, but I encourage you to uh, do the same, look around this software. Uh, and this is the end. Uh, thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs>